right guys this is Punisher and I wanted to talk about some effects that you can do to your microphone through voice meter banana that gives you a nice richer sound kind of a radio -y kind of sound you know uh, but anyway I, this came about from a conversation somebody asked me on Twitter a couple days ago about how they can add effects to their microphone using audition okay well audition good lord that's an expensive piece of software so either a you're gonna have to pirate it which I don't recommend because it's illegal B, you're going to have to pay an exorbitant amount of money for it because, like I said, it's so ex so expensive that they offer a subscription to it so people could actually afford to pay for it through a monthly subscription. Uh, so it's ridiculous. It does a great job. Don't get me wrong. You can add all kinds of effects to your microphone, including noise reduction, uh, background noise reduction, removal, that sort of thing, and it works great, but it requires a lot of resources on your computer, too. So, you know, guys that don't have a, you know, dual streaming rig PCs, for instance, you know, they're gaming, they're streaming using the same thing. It would really take a monster processor to be able to do all of those at the same time and not affect performance on your game in some manner, which is, you know, not what a gamer wants. They want all the performance they can use for the game. So let's go through Banana because Banana gives you a nice cheap because it, it, it's, it's virtually free, okay? It's supposed to be uh, donate where I recommend you donate a couple bucks for it because it's worth every penny. But you can download it for free if you want to. Well, I don't recommend it, but you can. Uh, but you can do that at VB audio, vb-audio.com and uh, go to the voice beater banana area and download it there. It works really good. I think you'll like it. There's tons of stuff you can do with it. So anyway, so let, now let's talk about the built-in effects because it does give you some much needed effects to really boost your signal. Okay, so the first thing that we have is we have compression. All right, let me move this down first of all because that's one of my things. All right, so anyway, now you hear my microphone. I want you to listen to it because this is what my raw audio sounds like without any kind of effects added. Okay, so it's kind of muddy. Okay, uh, you can hear the background noise. You know, it's not terrible sounding. But it could be a lot better. Okay, so let's talk about compression. Okay, you have a compressor here that's built in. It's really nice. And it's very simple to use. So what compression does for you, okay, think of kind of a band of sound. Okay, you have an upper limit and you have a lower limit. Okay, and you're trying to achieve so that anything that, that increases above that upper limit gets padded so that it, you know, does not go above that limit. And B, if you have a uh, level that goes below that threshold limit, then you want it to boost up so that it stays above that, that lower level, lower threshold. Well, that's what compression does for you. So I'm on my live stream. Something happens that I get really ticked off about. I yell, okay, and I scream really loud in my microphone just like this. Or, say for instance, I just happen to turn away from my mic and I kind of talk in my ears and you don't hear me really talking. Okay, so what compression is going to do is it's going to boost that low end, okay, to get it up so that you can actually hear it. And it's also going to pad anything really loud so that you don't get blown out when you're listening to my live stream or recording for that matter. So let's go ahead and, and increase compression a little bit. Now what I like to use is I like to set mine right at about a 1.4. Okay, so that gives me enough boost on the low end and enough uh, padding or fade on the top end so that you don't get blown out when I'm yelling or increase, you know, an increased level of uh, volume on my voice. Or likewise, if I'm talking really low like this, it still is very audible to you. Okay, so that is what compression does. You can hear a little bit of the background noise that increase because it does give you an overall boost on your microphone which is handy for me because my microphone is not as sensitive as others but it also increases your background noise likewise if you use too much compression then you're really going to bring your gain up to a level so much that the, you know the, the gain is going to be through the roof you're going to be hitting the ceiling and you can cause distortion you can cause clipping that sort of thing and that's not what you want for your sound you want a nice clean sound as clean as you can possibly get it so anyway so we got compression all right, so the next thing is your noise gate. You get a built-in noise gate here. It's really easy to use. And as you can see, I have three physical channels that have noise gate functions, so it's really nice. 
And uh, basically what you can do is if I were to quit talking right now, then I would uh, see nothing but my background noise on my level indicator here. And what you can do is you can increase this noise gate a little bit until that background noise goes away. And what that'll do for you is when you're not talking, okay, then your microphone, once it hits that threshold that your noise gate is set to, when it drops below it, then it won't, it'll, you know, deactivate your microphone. So it's a really nice thing to use. So I'll show you now. We'll go ahead and quit talking. Let the uh, level indicator settle out on my background noise, and I'll increase the noise gate so you can see it go away. All right, so there you go. I'm at about a point eight. So now, if I quit talking, then you should see the noise gate uh, go into effect and take away the sound. So I'll quit talking, and there you go. The noise is gone. Now, things you want to know about noise gate. Okay, yes, you can increase it really high and set that threshold really high. But when you do that, you're going to have to meet that threshold when you talk to key your microphone. And a lot of times, when you initially do it. It will not pick up that speech, so you can sound, you know, cut off at first when you're talking. It may cut off a part of the word that you're speaking. So that's another thing you got to play with with your noise gate, so that you don't set it too high, to where your microphone is not sensitive enough to pick up your voice right at the beginning. So point eight seems to work pretty well for me. I'm gonna go ahead and cut back get that back down because I want to make sure that you can hear me on my recording without really cutting myself out here. All right, so let's talk about IntelliPan. Uh, IntelliPan gives you a couple frequency uh, effects that you can do. Uh, first of all, it gives you a basic three-band equalizer from low, medium, to high in frequency, and it also gives you a reverb or echo effect. If you were to move this little orange square up, you could get an echo effect. So the best thing to do is to try to play around with this little orange square to get the best sound. Now, if I you know, move it all the way to the right, and you can hear how it cuts out all that low and a medium and likewise, if I move it all the way to the low end, and you can hear how it's cutting all the high end off. So, you know, you move it to the kind of the middle. Now, I like it kind of about right there. I like a little deeper sound. kind of gives you a little radio effect. And then watch as I increase the echo, because you'll start to see that my, uh, you know, the voice starts to get a little bit more depth to it, a little bit more space. And you can get it up here. And like I said, you'll start to add a little bit more echo effect to it. So, you know, echo is a great thing. You don't want to overdo it. But for vocals and for uh, like singing or speaking, it's nice to have a little bit of reverb in there. So, you know, like I said, it just gives you a little bit more depth to that track. So uh, I like that. And that's basically what IntelliPan does. It's nice. Uh, you know, and it has that uh, basic three-band EQ in it, and it has that echo effect. So... All right, now, as you see, I have my microphone feeding to a post-fade. My output of B2 it goes strictly from my microphone. All right, so now I can go over to B2, which is right here. And you can see I have an equalization, EQ. So I can actually turn that on. And there is my EQ now on. And if you right-click on the button, then you bring up the EQ. All right, so there is the EQ. Right now, I have this channel turned off, and if I turn it on, then you should hear a slight boost on the low end of the uh, microphone. It's nothing crazy. It's very subtle uh, the way I have it set, but it's very nice. So let me show you what you got. You got these different waves that you can change, and that's a, that is a deep fade uh, if you're having a really... Uh, you have a lot of peaks on the low end. You can use that. I don't know why you would use that. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, this is a parametric, so this is kind of like a custom setting. This is a uh, pretty much cutting out all your high end and trying to flatten, uh, give boost to your low end. Okay, so it's pretty crazy what different equalizations does. Likewise, if you just use the uh, default uh, wave, then you can control everything here. So what this knob does, this is... This increases or decreases your center frequency of where you're trying to equalize. So I can move this all the way from the bottom of 20, all the way up 20,000 hertz. It, you know, that's that's what it does. Uh, so you can do some equalization for the, through the full frequency spectrum, you know, of our audible hearing. So 
here I like to set mine somewhere around 40. So let's get this up right at 40. And there's a little boost. Now let me uh, try to smooth the wave out. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to increase the bandwidth of equalization. If I increase the number, then that decreases or narrows the bandwidth. If I decrease it, it widens. Okay, so the deep, the as low as you can get is one there. So that's about all I can do. I can, uh, let's see, I can move the frequency a little bit and then boost it up. And that would kind of smooth the wave out right there. So I, let's say that would be about 25. And then I can get a little boost. And uh, there you go. So you should have more low end impact. Now, what you could do, um, if you were to be able to, if you really want to maximize the quality of your sound of your output of your speakers, for instance, uh, you can take a measurement of your output that you want to equalize, then use a real-time analyzer. And this is, you know, you're talking some expensive equipment, all right? So if you know somebody, if you're in that deep in audio, or you have a real-time analyzer where you can figure out the peaks and the fades in your room, and you can come in here on your EQ, and then where those peaks and those fades are on the real-time analysis about a frequency, measured frequency, then you can go in here and you could adjust uh, these bands to those frequencies, and then you can give boost or fade as necessary to reduce those peaks to make a flat signal, because that's essentially what you're trying to achieve. All right, so that is the equalization, and really that is all of the effects in a nutshell that you can do inside a voice meter without using any other external effects. It's all built in, and like I said, this is a cheap way for you to get good uh, good sound out of your microphone. It really comes in effect, especially when you have cheaper microphones that are on your gaming headsets, for instance. Where you can actually, you know, equalize them, you could boost them a little bit, give a little extra sound out of them, and really kind of make them sound uh, a lot more richer than they would if you didn't do anything. So, anyway, guys, I hope this helped you out. Make sure you check out my playlist for more voice meter banana tutorials, including a definitive guide to voice meter banana, where I really talk about everything. I also have uh, dedicated tutorials for specific functions, such as V band, which I put out last week. If you're interested in hearing about how you can stream your audio over your internal Ethernet in your house to other PCs or other tablets, then V-Band is something you need to check out. It's really cool. I hope this video helped you out, guys. Make sure you check it out, and if you liked it, hit the like button, and also give me a subscribe. I'd appreciate it. All right, guys, y'all have a great week and weekend. We will see you out there. Be good. Bye-bye.